evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over the history and geography of Anguilla, which is part of the United Kingdom. First of all, just a quick note that on my channel I'm going through every little corner of the world in alphabetical order uh, in my ASMR Around the World series. And uh, last year, I accidentally left out two places, so you can see American Samoa's video uh, from yesterday. And today we're doing Anguilla, because someone pointed out, and thank you so much for pointing it out, after I did Angus Scotland, they're like, are you doing Anguilla? And I'm like, whoopsie, <laughs> left out the territories. So, let's get into it. I'm starting out on this very, very zoomed out map, just because I want to show you exactly where Aquila is before I tell you the story of its history. We'll get much closer in a minute. But you can see that Anguilla is part of the Leeward Islands, of the Lesser Antilles, of the Caribbean. The Greater Antilles are Cuba, you can see Hispaniola, Jamaica's just over here, like the famous islands. And then there's Puerto Rico right here. And the lee, the leeward, the lesser Antilles are the much smaller islands over here. So we have the leeward and the windward. So Anguilla is right up here. You can see around it are a bunch of other territories that are owned by France and the Netherlands. And then I want you to see that St. Kitts and Nevis is right down here. A former British colony that's now an independent nation. We have St. Kitts here, and we have Nevis here. And I just want you to remember that this is where St. Kitts and Nevis is, and this is where Anguilla is. Just keep that in the back of your mind, okay? Let's get a little closer and look at the beautiful island of Anguilla. I'm at a slightly precarious angle to show you this picture, but here's Anguilla. Sorry if the camera might shake a little bit. It's at a very precarious angle. Here's an wheel on the ground pencil. You can see that the valley here is the capital, which is just a perfect name, I think. And you can see the very rocky coastline. It does have some very beautiful beaches, though. Um, let me see. There's Sandy Meads is a big one. Um, lots of little secret little beaches here. And interestingly enough, there are no ports that are big enough for cruise ships to dock. So even though this is a Caribbean island, and there is lots of little tourist things here, it's not like a Caribbean tourist island. Right? It's one that gets passed over a like I said, no cruise ships. But, um, lots of very wealthy people have homes here. In fact, this big island up here, Scrub Island, is privately owned and has quite a few homes on it, though apparently some are abandoned. Which, again, like I said, in American Samoa, if anyone has an abandoned house in Scrub Island that they don't want, uh, contact. There are lots of other little islands that are part of Anguilla. You can see the prickly pear keys over here, which is my favorite. And um, you can tell by the names of like prickly pear and scrub that these islands' is landscapes aren't very ideal. They're very dry, very arid, very rocky. Um, seal Island here, obviously. Because these islands are nature reserves for the many, many creatures that live there, stop there, breed there, etc., etc. Lots of birds and things. I will mention real quick about, I think it was the prickly pear keys, how they were uh, mined for limestone for a minute there until they realized that it's not a very um, profitable place to mine. 
episodes. Um, people have lived there. Apparently now, there's it's a big place to like scuba and explore the the wildlife there. So there's places that people sail to every day to run restaurants and things, and they sail back at night. So there's no permanent residence in these islands here. If people live in Anguilla, if they're Anguillans, they live on this island. So let's talk about the history of this island. How did it become part of the- how is it still part of the United Kingdom, right? All the way so far away. You can also see, I should point out, St. Martin's right here. This is the French side here. The island of St. Martin's split between the French and the Dutch. That's definitely a story for another day. But it's very close. There's a ferry that goes in between them. But let's talk about Anguilla and its history. There are lots of interesting indigenous sites on this island. Um, there are some petroglyphs that are from about 3,500 years ago. And the early Arawaks called this island Maluhan, which is a really pretty name. I wish they'd kept it. Anguilla means eels. It's not as pretty as Maluhana. But the British sailed up in 1650. They came from the island of St. Kitts. Remember, I told you to remember St. Kitts. And no one was living on the island at the time, so they were like, oh cool, this is part of St. Kitts now. They started to colonize it. But in 1656, the little village that they had built was raided by indigenous peoples, probably Caribs, from a different island, just randomly attacked. It was a very precarious place to try to settle down. Not just because of the indigenous factor, which from what I can tell wasn't a factor for very long, because like I said, nobody actually lived here when the British arrived. But it was mostly due to the ongoing conflict between the French and the English. Now for a long time in history, the English and the French did not get along. Like it goes back to... 1100s, probably a little further. They did not get along, and in the 1700s it was like at its peak. And a lot of, I assume, it, like today we'd call them proxy wars, but at the time it was who can gobble up the most territory in the Caribbean. The French attacked many times. They actually claimed the island for a good year late 1700s, before the revolution. And, um, yeah, it, it it was worse on other islands, like St. Lucia's, just down there. That, that was the worst one. But the French attempted many, many times to ransack the island, and there were some pretty devastating attacks. But uh, the British held it pretty much the majority. The British were originally growing tobacco on the island, but uh, tobacco wasn't taking very well, I guess, to the soil and the climate. And many people who moved there, established plantations, wound up leaving. So they switched to sugar cane. That brought a lot more profits. But um, to grow all the tobacco and then later the sugar cane, they brought over kidnapped Africans to work the plantations, and as you can imagine, there were far, far more Africans living here than British. And the, the population here today is, like, I would assume, like 99.9% descended from those African slaves. The economy of this island was never that prosperous, especially compared to other islands owned by like, it did its thing, but, I mean, St. Kitts was down there, just absolutely thriving, right? St. Kitts and Nevis were bringing in a lot of money to the British Empire. Not so much Anguilla, but they were doing their part. They could, especially after slavery was abolished, and the slave trade abolished in the early 1800s. Um, they, they did what they could. So, eventually... In 1958, things were getting official, and the British government said, we're going to declare an official territory called St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla. 
will all be one entity. And the Aquilans weren't happy about that. One, because you saw how far St. Kitts was from Aquil. Like, it's not far, but it's not near, you know. St. Kitts and Nevis are just a stone's throw away from each other, almost literally. Aquil is not. There's a lot of islands between Aquil. And two, I'm pretty sure, I didn't actually read this, but that's what I assumed from my research that all of the money and the wealth was going to go to St. Kitts, the little golden child down there, and Anguilla would be neglected. Because if you're dividing up profits between these three islands, Nevis wasn't getting that much because it's very sparsely populated. It's pretty much, at that time, was just big plantations and that's it. Like, there's no, like, central town or anything. I just, I'm pretty sure to this day there's no towns, towns officially on it's just little shacks here and there. But the people like it that way, so that's fine. Um, so Nevis was already getting the short end of the stick compared to St. Kitts. And Anguilla was about to get far worse. So the people here protested. They held a referendum in 1967 and voted to be removed from St. Kitts. Now they weren't trying to gain independence, right? They weren't trying to start their own country. St. Kitts, however, is a different story, but Anguilla's like, we want to be part of the British Empire. We want to be part of Great Britain, but we don't want to be part of St. Kitts. Just leave them out of this. We want to be our own thing within the UK. And once the British government just didn't do anything with those referendum results, they formed their own rebellion. Now, this rebellion did get pretty violent. The military was called in from England at one point. But it was never like a full rebellion. Like, especially, you know, we're in the 1960s, 1970s. Cubas were right over there. It was nothing like that, okay? It was not like um, huge fights and battles and militants and all of that. It wasn't like, it wasn't that. It was a protests and riots, things like that. Again, not a full-on independence movement, just we don't want to be part of St. Kitts. And finally, after all of that, the UK recognized what they wanted, and in 1980, Anguilla ceded from St. Kitts and became its own crown colony, which would change in 2002 to overseas territory because colony is a problematic term nowadays. We don't want colonies. It's an overseas territory of the UK. And that's pretty much where we are today in Anguilla's history. Very interesting place. Very welcoming to tourists, but like I said, don't expect like resorts. There's no sandals here, you know. It's very laid back and chill, good seafood, good music, beautiful beaches, and just relaxed calm, you know, none of the the frantic energy of Caribbean resorts, which isn't a bad thing. It's fun. But this is just a different vibe here in Anguilla. It's a place where you enjoy the beautiful coral reefs you can see here. Enjoy the waves, enjoy the weather. And, um, I'm gonna show you something really cool that's down here. Let me pull out my tablet so you can see if I was a tourist in Anguilla, the very first thing I would do. Let's, let's turn out the lights and go to the tablet. A lot of you have mentioned that you like the tablet segment with the lights off where you can just see the silhouette of my hands. Um, which I agree it seems much more relaxing for, like, the end of an ASMR video to dim the lights a little bit, you know. Maybe it'll help you sleep. Here's Anguilla. I'm going to zoom out again so you can see just exactly where we are on Google Earth. So here's the Caribbean. There's South America, Central America, and North America. And remember, the Greater Antilles is the big islands up here, the big famous ones. The Lesser Antilles are the little ones. I assume, I've always just assumed Puerto Rico is part of the Greater 
is because it's like the last big island until you hit the tiny ones, right? So here's Anguilla. What did I click off of it? Anguilla, please. Nope. Where are your little dicks? <laughs> Anguilla. Okay. <laughs> anyway, here's Anguilla. Let me show you. Oh goodness, I just forgot where it was. There's a big lagoon over here. Okay, let's play around. There's somewhere where there's a big lagoon over here. This is where it was. This tourist spot that's now not popping up. Google Earth constantly lets me down. Works just fine whenever the camera's off. I hit record and it just stops working. It's also, it keeps showing me gyms, and I wonder if it's because it's New Year's. It's like they want to see all the gyms. Maybe that wasn't where it was. Is it over here? It's over here. That's why it wasn't popping up. Good job. <laughs> I'm dissing Google Earth and it's not even my fault. Look at this. So, you can. Get on a horse and ride on the beach in the water. Oh my gosh. It's the only picture, but it's the only picture I need. Absolutely 1000%. And someday I'm going to go to Anguilla and do this. 100% without a doubt. That looks so much fun. Oh, it looks so peaceful too. But let me show you the rest of the island. You can see lots of neat little lagoons built in there. Lots of little homes. I wonder if they're rentals or if they're actual homes. But I think what's neat about this aerial view is that you can see the remnants of the old, like, farms that happened here, right? Surely there's still some farming. You can see these look like very nice kind of farmy houses, but you can see where the land was divvied up by what used to be farms and plantations, right? Isn't that interesting? All the roads are made. See the golf course there. Um, let's take a look at a beach. This is a sandy ground beach. And I always say if you see one beach, you see them all. So we're not going to look at too many, whoa, too many slideshows of beaches because a beach is a beach is a beach. Especially Caribbean beaches. They're all super luxurious and nice. Sailboat out there. Look at that old rusty thing there. What's the story behind this? I also love that the last few times I've gone on Google Earth and seen shipwrecks and been like, what's that story? Someone's told me the story and that's great. So, one of you tell me what happened here. <laughs> what in the world? That looks like a cargo ship that's been like ripped apart. <laughs> Let's look at one. Let's look at, let's see, let's see. Oh, I do have to show you this. This is the one beach I have to show you. At the Anguilla Arch, because this is apparently a big tourist spot, which you'll see why. It's a natural arch. How special is that? There's not a lot of natural arches in the world in the water like this, because they don't really last long. There was a famous one in Malta that collapsed a few years ago during a storm. Oh, look, did you see that? a friend there <laughs> hiding in the shrubs but yeah you can still walk out on this one it looks very thick so that's something that a lot of people come to see because that's very beautiful great photo spot gosh that water must feel incredible right look at this landscape it's so so pretty so yeah not a not a beachy island, but the beaches here are very nice, but not to the point where it's like, you know, Caribbean style kind of thing. Um, what else do I need to show you? There's lots of fun little things. I highly encourage you to explore them on your own. But it's mostly little beaches and restaurants. Remember, if there's anything else I wanted to show you. That was pretty cool. There's lots of cool, but 
Alright, then why don't we... Actually, let me look up here. See all the gems popping up? Let's look at Captain's Bay. Very nice. Oh, pretty. And then we'll take a look at the other islands, even though they just kind of look like this. And there's no pictures on them, but we'll look at them from above. Oh, look at those big crashes of waves there on the shore. This is what I want. I want to put my feet right there. Just feel that water splash again. That's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite sensations is the ocean washing over your feet and just watching your feet get buried and buried and buried. And then um, when you're ankle deep, look at that cacti. When you're ankle deep, you rip your feet out of the sand. That's the best feeling. If you've never felt that, get yourself to a sandy beach in the ocean. Everyone's got to feel that at some point. lots of cacti. You can see why we have a prickly pear island, because it's pretty much covered in prickly pear and cacti. So here's Scrub Island, like I said. Um, not inhabited 100% of the time. Um, let's look at Bebe Le Combe. There's no pictures. I should have known. The other islands don't have any pictures. And you can see why it's called Scrub Island. Scrubs. You know, not a lot of trees growing here. I assume it's too windy for any big trees. It's just little scrubby shrubs. And then if we head over here, we can see over here is Dog Island. Which you can see is pretty barren, like compared to a, a Caribbean island. You think palm trees, there's, I don't know why I tried, there's no pictures. There's no big palm trees, there's no rainforest, it's just, it's all scrubby. And I thought at first, I like looked at these pictures before I researched the history, I was like, did these get narrowed? Like, were these mined out of existence? Because I looked at prickly pear, and you can see, again, the remnants of what once was territorial marks, you know, from these roads built in. Um, you can see parts that look kind of Norui. If it'll ever load all the way. Kind of very rocky. And I was like, oh, was this strip mined? What happened here? But, um, like I said, there was some mining, but it's not like it was devastated. You know? It's just a, a rocky, dry place. Pear keys. See, like you can see what used to be. They mapped out who would own what, but there's nothing there now. Just beautiful wildlife. A little center here you can enjoy. I bet you that's one of the restaurants, little beaches you can hang out at. Let's see pictures. <gasps> Stop! I found one. <laughs> there's not a lot, but it's there. Yes, you can pull up in your little yacht. <sighs> This dude on his boat. Plage de Poa. But yeah. I think I like this song. No, I should have known. But that is Anguilla. Gorgeous. Let's look at Black Garden Bay while I end this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing going full speed ahead back into the series, and we're going to head over to Venezuela. And a very interesting part of Venezuela, probably one you wouldn't, you know, look at and say, oh, that's Venezuela. It's not on the beach. It's not in the rainforest. It's a very different place. It's the home of Doña Barbara. If you don't know who that is, be sure to subscribe so you can learn who that was, even though she was. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a good, good